Okay. My first guest is a three-time Academy Award-nominated actress who is currently starring in The Last Married Couple in America. It's a great pleasure to welcome Miss Natalie Wood. I met you before, you know. I know, on an airplane. Oh, you remember. <laughs> that was a long time ago. It was. When I found out I was sitting next to you, I went a little spare. And I sat there and I thought, what am I going to say that's going to be interesting for her? If I say anything at all, maybe better to say nothing. Anyway, you got on the plane, you put the blindfolders on. Oh, and, yeah. And went to sleep for the whole trip. Oh, no, we talked a little bit. Did we? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I remember I, I tried to think of something brilliant to say, and I remember once you stirred and I said, uh, sleepy? And you said, yes. <laughs> but you were very nice. And, and let's face it, when you're on a plane, really, you don't need a lot of people coming up to you and saying all kinds of things, because you're usually tired on a plane and just think yeah. about getting there. You well, know. I usually take loads of magazines and books and, totally. and needlepoint and stuff like that. And then I, uh, sometimes I go to sleep. Hmm. Hey, I went to see your movie last night. I thought, if I'm going to talk to you, I'd like to go and see the movie. And I thought, what if I don't like it? What am I going to <gasps> say? But I loved it. But you did love good it? Good movie. Oh, good. I recommend people to go and see it. Oh, it's a that's funny good. movie. Oh, good. It's a little risque at times, but yeah. uh, that's keeping with the trend, I guess. And I really, I'm not saying this because you're here, but I, I think it's one of the best things you've ever done. I thought oh. you showed a whole new dimension in your acting, something I'd never seen before. Well, thank you very much. That's excellent. Very, Have you seen it? Yes, I'm, I'm oh, very right. pleased because I love working. And you and, and George time. Siegel work so well together. The chemistry is incredible. Yeah, he's terrific. He with those bulgy eyes and that twisted mouth. <laughs> Man is incredible. <laughs> But, and I love the scene you did where you were all nervous and the, the guy tried oh, to... The, the, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> You've got to go and see it. It's, it's, it's great. It, it must have been very enjoyable it to do that. It was terrific. Kind of it picture. was a wonderful experience because all the people involved in it were friends. You know, I hadn't really worked with anyone else before except for Gilbert Cates, the director. We had worked together. My husband and I uh, did a, a television show called The Affair that Gil directed when oh, yeah. I was pregnant with my second child, as a matter of fact. And anyway, since then, we've been friends. Courtney is now five and a half. And um, this was the first opportunity that we had to work together again. But with George, we had sort of missed a couple of chances to work together. And, uh, well, Dick, Benjamin, I've been his friend, and Paula's friend, Paula Prentice, his wife. But we'd never, you know, worked together. But it was, it was terrific to sort of get in this room. Valerie Harper was the only one I didn't know, and I didn't know Dom from before, Dom Delaware. Mm -hmm. So we all made friends. But Gil got us all together, and we read the whole script. And it, it gave a terrific, you know, sense of where we were heading, even though it was... Um, it really is kind of an old-fashioned movie in a way. It is really no different than some of the great pictures Lemon made in the 50s, except that it's more risque and, and, and the language. Now, you get to say the magic word in this movie. Yes, I don't know how to explain it. Well, don't. To but, uh, and Natasha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. to your children? About the F word. But, uh, they Will you let them go and see it? I'm not, I can't <laughs> decide. I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. What do you think? If you had a nine-year-old... Well, Katie I have a two-year-old. But... Katie's almost 16, so she's allowed. She liked it, too. She liked it a lot. How did you feel about doing that? Just saying Me? those words, personally. That didn't bother you at all. I hate to well, admit, they came naturally to yeah. me. I mean... <laughs> There's a couple of dandies you use that are great. <laughs> Just great. Now, you said Courtney was five and a half? Well, actually, Courtney, my God, Courtney's going to be six next six. month. Next month. And you started in coming up. pictures when you were five. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tomorrow is forever, That's wasn't right. it? That's right, yes. With, uh, with Thorson, Orson Welles. Yes. The great mm -hmm. Orson Welles. And... Uh, how do your kids, how do they feel when they see you on the screen, especially in the early pictures? Well, Courtney, at the moment, we have some films, some cassettes, you know, of, of films that we've taped from television. 
and um, she she becomes very addicted to, to one movie for a period of time. You know, she either loved the Heart to Heart episode, which she which she looks at, or Miracle on 34th Street. Miracle on 34th Street. That's Street. a classic, by the way. I mean, everybody any age likes that picture. I could see that movie over and over and over. That's a tremendous movie. Yeah, it's funny about a film like that that it really uh, you know over the years hasn't lost its uh, its appeal at all. I think everybody kind of looks forward to seeing it at Christmas time. Yeah, they they, they tried to remake it and it just. It, to me, it didn't didn't shouldn't make it. Be, shouldn't no, be they made. shouldn't remake these classics. Because it was of its time anyway. I don't think. I mean, I feel the same way about Santa Claus, but I don't know. Yeah. So they love it. They 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 enjoy watching yeah. it on the screen. Yeah. They Gosh. Do. You. Uh, I guess starting out at such an early age in pictures uh, must have been a lot of problems f for you personally. I mean, as far as other kids playing with other kids learning and no you know it's interesting i i was on some shows recently uh one with jody foster who's you know obviously a a child actress although i think jody's 17 now and uh brooke shields who's oh, yeah. 14 and um it was interesting to hear their point points of view because uh, they feel fine i mean they don't uh feel that they're that they have any problems i mean i think it's an it's um perhaps an unusual way to make a living when you're a kid but uh yeah. it was okay how do you at, at that young i mean at five learn lines when you can't read obviously That's somebody right. has to read it to you yes my mother read read me the lines when i was five and then i learned to read but the first thing i did i had to speak uh i had to learn to speak german and i had to learn to speak english with That's a german right. accent That's right. and they bleached my hair and all that Imagine her first movie, she had to speak German. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's incredible for me. I mean, it's a God-given talent to be able to act in the, at the age you started out at. Because Except, you know, how do you explain to a kid what it's all about? They just have that natural instinct, don't they? Because kids love to do it. I mean, if you just hear, because I sometimes just am, am doing something else, and I overhear my children playing, yeah. they do it. You know, it's a sort of natural You're thing. Right. They really are the best improvisers. You're right, because my daughter's two, and she, she'll put, put me on and, oh. and do numbers and everything, you know. Do you have just one? Yeah. Yeah, oh, Bria. Oh, she's Oh, she's Bria? just Bria. And she's just going through that age where she's incredible. And when they say something very adult, you know, or use an expression, it just puts you away. You know, I'll have her doing impressions by the time she's five. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. She'll be doing Nixon, you know, goo goo, daddy, potty, potty, po po. <laughs> You were in a, a, a picture that I always love. We've got Dan Ford on. Uh, yeah, later to talk about John Ford. You did oh, the searchers with yeah. him. Boy, that, that must wonderful. have been an experience. How old were you when you made that? I was about uh, 15 and a half. I had just made a picture with Jimmy Dean called Rebel Without a Cause. And my next oh, yeah. job was the searchers. And we went to the Monument Valley, Arizona. My younger sister, Lana, was also in that. She played me as a child in the early part when I'm stolen hmm. by, by the Indians. And uh, we were there with uh, nothing to do. You know, John Ford and the whole company was there, John Wayne and Ward Bond and, and the whole. Uh, and it was interesting for them because we were living on an Indian reservation and they had built a place to, to have to be a dining room. And um, the only thing I could think of to do was there was a piano and I would like to go and practice. But every night they had poker games. So that was a little tricky. And the drinking and must have it. been uh, pretty wild. Eh? That, that group. Yes, John I guess Ford so. had a yes, group of cronies there, uh, Ward Bond and uh, Harry Carey and a few people that uh, yeah. liked And there to... was a great danger of scorpions, I recall. If scorpions climbed in people's boots and things like that. Did you get along well with Ford? I mean, did he... Oh, he was lovely to me. He really was very nice. Um, uh, um, well, uh, there, there was a funny story. Uh, I don't think I can tell it on the air, actually. But, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had gotten terribly sunburned just before it was my turn to work. And he didn't believe me somehow. And uh, um, Pat Wayne, John's son, came to get me and, and rehearsed. And I said, well, I can't. I was being bandaged up by the doctor because I had this terrible sunburn. And he said, oh, well, I mean, what will Uncle John say? And I said, well, I don't know, but I mean, I can't work. Maybe they can come over here and rehearse. So he went and told Uncle John. And Uncle John came back with a very harsh message for me. It was something that I could do in my hat. So I sent back the same message saying that he could do the same thing. And anyway, then he and John Wayne arrived and saw that I was really legitimately ill and, and not sort of, you know, being, being difficult or anything. And he was very kind and said not to worry. They would shoot around me and so forth, which they did. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, we'll return with our guests and more of the show after we pause for this message of interest.
talking to um, Natalie Wood, who just finished The Last Married Couple in America, which is a very funny movie. And I guess you could say that you really... I was going to say you had never done a part quite like that before, but you did Sex and the Single Girl and Bob and Carol, Ted and Alice, which had the same kind of flavor, but not really, though, huh? Well, in a way, not. I think my part in, in this is, uh, allows more, um, more fun for me. I mean, I yeah. think... Yeah, uh, and the timing was incredible. Of course, with Siegel, you know, you, you, as with Glenda Jackson, it's all in that timing, that rhythm that you get going. Yeah, The yeah. guy is tremendous at... Uh, what he's good at are, are, are double takes and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and expressions and, uh, God. Oh, and he and Dick together, Dick Benjamin, too. I mean, they would break each other up on the set. It was really wonderful. As a matter of fact, George's wife, Marion, was, is the associate editor on the picture, and she put together a gag reel of outtakes, you know, which is always fun for oh, yeah. those of us connected with it. And uh, it was lovely. We just ran it today for a friend who came by. That's great. Well, you've had, uh, you played a lot of interesting, different parts in your career. I remember when you played in Cat in the Hot Tin Roof. That was pretty heavy with Bob that and was Lawrence a Olivier, wonderful experience. huh? Yes, that was a terrific thing to, to uh, have been able to do, to be able to work with him and to do the play text also. In other words, it wasn't just the adaptation. It yeah. wasn't uh, a screenplay adaptation. It was the original play. Yeah. So that was, that was super, yeah. That was good. I enjoyed that, too, yeah. We're going to see a little film, film clip here, aren't we, of... Uh, of the last married couple in, in oh, the Oh, yeah. I think this is uh, when George... Now, this is didn't the part just... where I ask you... I always love this in talk shows, where I ask you, what are we going to see? And Will the guest always says, gee, I, I really don't know what <laughs> they're going to show. Well, let's watch it, and we'll all find out together. No, we're not going to do that. Now. They do that all the time. But you know what we're going to see. I right? know this film. Okay, yes. what is the scene? We're going to okay, see? I have just had this terrible news uh, that uh, George, that I have found out terribly unexpectedly, that George has been unfaithful. Yes. And uh, this uh, has not gone down well with me at all in this scene. This is the pimple scene, is it? No, this isn't the pimple scene. Oh, I wish it was the pimple oh. scene. But in the pimple scene, I say the F word, so I'm not oh, allowed to show the pimple that. scene. No, this is another scene. Okay, we'll see this other scene. <laughs> and here it is. I can't get out of this elevator. It's an express. I don't want you near me. All right. All right. Look, it's not the end of the world. I understand, but Arnie cured me. I am cured. Oh, I can't look at you. All right. Don't look at me. Make me feel even more rotten. Is that what you want? All right. I feel rotten. Good. Fine. I'm hurt. I'm deeply hurt. I don't give a damn what the new morality says. I'm hurt. I I'm not hip enough to say it doesn't matter. It does matter to me. I thought we had something special. I thought you didn't need that. Or if you did, it would be a stranger. It would be discreet. No one would get hurt. No, 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 no. What am I saying? I don't mean that. The truth is, when it comes to this, I'm a square. I won't have you around with other women. Well, what about, what about you? That was years ago. So what? And you beat the hell out of me. I slapped you once. It was damn hard. Now we're even. No, we're not. That was different. We weren't getting along then. No, we weren't, but still. Anyway, I thought you forgave me about all that. I did, but I gotta use something. And I told you about it. At least I felt guilty. You told me to hurt me. Yes, that was part of it. But I also wanted to get it off my chest. You said nothing. Well, I didn't have a chance. It just happened. It just happened. It was an accident. What? Yes, an accident. You sleeping with her was an accident? Yes. Hey, okay. All right, okay. Ow. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, accident. Accident. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and, and that's for not appearing in the movie 10. <laughs> <laughs> little inside there, right? How many times did you do that scene? Well, well you must have been it. black and the blue. The first time I did it, George just stayed there on the ground. You know, I thought I'd killed him. But <laughs> then he put some uh, shin guards on and we did it a few more times. <laughs> that's funny. That's a, that's a great scene. Yeah, that whole movie is, uh, it just moves along. Got a, it's not a nice, fast clip to it, too. You can't stay because you're going to the movie awards tonight? Yes, And yes. your husband, Bob, is here? He's here, and we're both going to go to the awards, and I'm going to present the, the award for the best actor. Now, when people see this, uh, it will it, have been, been over. It will have been it, over. It'll be over. 
so you were really sensational. You were excellent. You were really good. Yeah, you really did. And, and funny. And when I tripped, that yeah. was all right. Oh, but they myself. didn't notice didn't the notice trip. That. No, no one, no one noticed it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I wish you could stay, but you have to go and do it. Thank and you. Uh, say hi to Bob and tell him I'm working on his voice, and it will be in my act soon. I'll give him a call. Oh, that'll be terrific. We're your great admirers. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. I'm glad you came on the show. It's nice meeting you. Thanks. Other than sitting in a plane with eye shades on. <laughs> yes, it was okay. nice to talk to you. Thank Take you. care. Look. 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 Look.